Yeah. Yeah. Call this uh, CPDC meeting for November 7th to order. First order of business is a public hearing for a definitive subdivision Randall Road extension. Julie, do you want to update us? Sure. Um, so this plan for us is a definitive four lot subdivision on Randall Road. Um, one of the lots is existing and has a house on it and it's just been reconfigured and that's the one that has frontage on Springdale Road. And the, then there's three new lots with frontage on Randall Road which will be extended approximately 200 feet from where it ends right now. Um, a preliminary plan was approved by this board in July or June. Um, and so this is the definitive plan so we have 90 days in which to do this. Okay. So who's here. Uh, Jack McWilkin, uh, registered engineer for JM Associates, uh, representing Mark Hall. We couldn't be here tonight. He's uh, he's ill. Uh, yeah, this project is pretty much an extension of the existing condition that's out there. Uh, the the cul-de-sac now. Uh, Julie, do you want to uh, switch the plans around? Or? Um, I have the plan set on the one. This mm -hmm. is just the, the straggler. You know what? I'm sorry. We have to read the um, notice. Because this is not a continuation, <coughs> right? That's right. Want me to read it? Sure. Uh, sorry pub about that. Public hearing legal notice. Notice is hereby given that under Mass General Law, Chapter 41, Section 81T, and Section 6.2.1 of the Reading Subdivision Regulations, the Community Planning and Development Commission, CPDC, will hold a public hearing on Monday, November 7th, 2016, at 7.30 p.m. in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Reading Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, to consider the application for a definitive subdivision submitted by Mark G. Hall for property located at 0 Randall Road, Assessor's Map 15, Lots 5, 6, 7, and 8, and Assessor's Map 10, Lot 296, and for property located at 25 Springvale Road, Assessor's Map 10, Lot 294, a copy of the application and associated plans are available to the public in the Public Services Office in Town Hall Monday through Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Tuesdays from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, sorry about that. So does this sound? Yeah. Move them up and down? Um, I just wanted to the... So the existing, um, the existing condition is uh, a, a cul-de-sac that's at the uh, end of Randall Road, and um, this, these uh, lots beyond it are vacant, wooded, there's a little bit of wetland, and then uh, there's one parcel which contains number 25, Springvale, and these one, two, three, four, uh, five, six lots will be reconfigured into, um, if I can move that up, Julie. Into the um, like the grading plan. This one. Yeah. Or do you want the new one? Uh, yeah, the new one. Yeah. 
So they'll be reconfigured into three new lots, one, two, and three. And then the existing 25 Springvale Road will be um, will, will just be a uh, 15,000 square foot lot uh, that exists now, basically. Uh, so the cul-de-sac that was here basically moves up uh, 200 feet. Um, all the utilities get extended, the water, sewer, uh, the uh, overhead uh, of, uh, electric telephone and cable. Um, the drainage um, is basically contained in, in two different systems. There's a little detention pond here on lot one, which is going to catch the runoff from the, um, from the cul-de-sac, and then it's going to uh, hold it back in the detention pond and then discharge under the road to a um, sediment four bay and then to a water quality swale and then into an existing wetland. And then the second system are these two uh, uh, tree box filters, which are called filtera filters, and they will ca uh, capture the water from the circle on down. They can treat it within themselves, and then they just uh, uh, discharge into the wetland. Um, topography, uh, basically the high point is here at the 25 uh, Springvale Roadhouse elevation. About, it's about 262 at the house. And then the low point is about elevation 248, which is here in the north uh, northwest corner of the project. Um, wetlands were delineated by um, Norse Environmental. And we do have an approved um, ANRAD plan of conservation. There's basically a uh, series that goes around this little low area. And then right along this drainage ditch to the north of our property, the A series. There's also a uh, C series here, which is about 49 square feet. It was deemed um, too small to be jurisdictional. And there's also a little D series here where we will be filling that in, which was I think 643 square feet. And um, we will be replacing that with a uh, wetland replication area adjacent to this low spot of uh, 1,288 square feet. Um, the tree box filters, uh, right now the town engineer has asked us to meet the new um, MS4 requirements for stormwater management, which requires the, um, the um, suspended solids to be, 90% uh, of the suspended solids to be removed, and also 60% of the phosphorus. And these tree box filters will, will accomplish that. That was really one of the only BMPs I could find that would really do that. And the way they work, they're basically similar to a catch basin where it has an open mouth at the gutter. The water goes into a, um, there's a layer of uh, mulch on top which traps the sediment and any trash. Then it goes through the mulch into a, um, into a media, I guess it's a proprietary uh, media that removes the phosphorus and the, um, and the other suspended solids, which I guess gets sucked up. There's actually a tree um, that will be planted in each one of these, and the tree actually holds back the, um, the pollutants. And um, it's been tested. They remove somewhere around 90% of the suspended solids and the phosphorus. So that's, I think, roughly the project. some some notes I think in the DRT DRT let's see, something about that engineering had issues with a lot of the drainage I'm trying to find that note Which DRT uh, I thought I read them while well, I read them online so I'm trying to see if it was these there was a comment that there was still a lot of drainage issues that had to be worked out. It's from conservation. Okay. Okay. Do the trees and the tree box um, pieces, do those fall under the tree portion of the findings in the, in the decision? Is the tree warden responsible for those trees? Okay. 
But is there going to be a, a maintenance plan for the drainage <laughs> system? There is a maintenance plan for the drainage system. Yeah, we did. We included it in our uh, stormwater report. Right. Uh, for those filters, it's basically a um, twice a year uh, inspection. Uh, they they go out. Um, basically take out uh, any sediment or trash that's built up in the mulch. Um, and they do it spring and fall. And once a year, they go out and actually replace the mulch. And inspect the tree, prune the tree if, uh, as necessary. So that's pretty much it. It's a once a year um, mulch replacement. Okay, but those trees are important for the system to work. So they're yes. tied to the maintenance. If the tree dies, it has to be replaced. Yes. It's not just landscaping. Yes. Okay. So what is going on with conservation? They still, um, still want us to keep this open? That was my suggestion. Yeah. For conservation for the so then Jack is going to keep it open and Yeah, we have had one uh, meeting with conservation on the 26th. Um, they did have some concerns. They, they haven't done their site walk yet. They're actually doing it tomorrow. Okay. Um, they did have some questions on the um, operation and maintenance plan, um, and I've actually met with the town engineer uh, since then, and we'll probably be submitting them a, a new operation and maintenance plan. And um, I think that was the big, the, and also they, they were concerned about the landscaping of the project, the trees, uh, the tree removal pro uh, policy. Mm -hmm. Um, we're submitting a revised uh, um, plan showing the trees that are going to be cut down and also a revised or a new uh, landscape plan. So we're meeting again Wednesday night and hopefully get um, maybe maybe most of those issues re uh, resolved. Okay. Uh, the only other question I had was I remember discussing the granite curves. Um, is this waiver for all granite curving? No. Well, we, we talked about having some kind of transition. We were concerned about the transition from the no, there's no granite curbing in the old road, right? right? Exactly. Concerned about how that would be maintained right. if the plows start hitting it. So this was the agreement that the public works director and the county engineer came to. Um, because vertical granite curbing is easier for maintenance, but they want to continue to go straight away the way that it is now. Um, that was, this was the happy medium. Okay. I will tell you that the non-granite curbing across the front of my piece of property is completely falling apart and DPW doesn't respond to repairing it and it's just getting worse. So that's what's going to happen there. I mean, you can <laughs> definitely recommend having all these vertical I don't know why they don't want that there. I don't remember what the reason I, was. I, I, <coughs> It's like an opportunity to do the right things. Yeah, I mean, we have there's there's been certain conditions that this board has um, has sort of agreed upon to uh, provide waivers. They have been if it's an internal roadway, which this is not, um, and if it doesn't if it's not incorporated as part of the stormwater system to maintain the water. Maybe that is, maybe it isn't. I, I, I'd have to look in more detail, but. Our whole, the whole point of the policy was that roads that are going to be accepted by the town had vertical granite curbing. So I don't know why there is a compelling reason not to do that. I don't think there is actually. I think they were just trying to come up with. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah. There's a transition happening at the bulb edges where the, where the granite stops along the bulb and begins the straightaway again. There's a transition there. Just that yeah, transition they were going to have it like extend a tiny bit around the. Right. Right, yeah, which is actually about right there. 
I think when we when we were here during the preliminary, the um, I think the way it was left was they would leave it up with, to the town engineer or DPW. At that point, we the met with them and they agreed to, to the allow us to. Right. It was just on the detail, on the detail. of the transition, transition. from yep. the from the existing to the future, not on that whole space section. How are we draining into the um, south detention area from the bulb? Uh, there's two catch basins? basins. It is, okay. So it's not going to run over land right. over that edge of roadway. Um, on this diagram, where are the, the tree box filters? Uh, they're right here. There's a TV, TV1 and TV2. Uh, sure. Okay, so that at that point we basically do not want the granite curb because the granite curb would near interfere with the drainage into those features. Is that correct assumption? Yeah, this is the this is the detail of the of the tree box. This is basically the mouth, the, the opening, so the water comes down into the opening um, through the mulch layer, through the media, and then out a um, drain at the bottom. It's like uh, the old storm drain. Right. The side of the side. So it has a vertical edge, right? What's the tree that? box has a vertical edge to yes. it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a concrete unit. Yeah, but that's above grade. Right. Right. Six inches. Yes. So the the granite curbing could come right up to the east side of them, east side of them, and stop, and then there could be nothing behind them. Right. That could be the, the, the termination point. Because there's a hard vertical edge there that a plow has to deal with, that DPW has to deal with, and so to have a hard edge for six feet, four feet, and then nothing back to the curb just seems like a problem. Mm -hmm. I would run the granite curb and from down to right down to the tree yeah. box. And then the transition and then the transition from there down. Yeah. <coughs> That's what I would recommend. Where's the roadway stop? Where's the old roadway relative to the tree box? It's basically right in here. It's right in there. So you're, you're working in that area anyways to patch it. You're not paving much further down, right? No. Okay. Yeah. All the way down here and around. And then this piece that's on this side can be where it connects in. Can be. Right. That's the old yeah. bituminous. That's that's how I would recommend yeah. doing it. Yeah, this is the. So yeah. the existing bulb is where the, the TV, the tree box filters will be. Yeah. Considering all these other waivers are going to probably be accepted, be more expensive. Be more expensive to bury the utilities. Yeah, they can't. Sorry, what you I know they can't. So they're getting a waiver for that. <coughs> waiver for the traffic study. Waiver for the 500 foot. Waiver for the 20. I mean, there's 10 waivers, 11 waivers, not including the granite. I just think it's going to make for a better street. Mm -hmm. I've seen what's happening to our bituminous edges. Is the curbing. 
can use the rest of it seems reasonable. So what happens if we keep this open? Okay, when's our next meeting? Uh, January 9th, but I'm suggesting you keep this open until January 23rd because the Conservation Commission doesn't think it'll be done until mid-January. Oh, okay. So well, at least the Conservation Agent doesn't think They still have to wait for con, so we're not holding them. No. Okay. Um, does anyone from the public want to comment on this? Is anyone here for that? Okay. Good. Okay, so let's look at this decision, I guess. Well, I guess we wouldn't we wouldn't move on this decision, right? We're going to just continue the hearing? Yeah, I mean, um, we can yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, I think we came up with the modification to handle the, the curbing, which we'd want to fold into the decision. Mm -hmm. I think a question I had last time was around plans to pave the rest of Spring, not Springdale, Randall Road. I don't know if we ever saw if that it's on the list oh, to I, be scheduled. I didn't ask the about that. It's not in any upcoming schedule. Okay. All right. Okay. That's a good Just wanted to make sure it got slotted properly if it was. Yeah. If, if you look at the existing map, the where. Randall Road goes back and ties into the the other paper streets is almost entirely wetland. Mm. So it would be a nice idea, but they're they're paper streets for a reason. Yep, gotcha. Yeah. Um, is it safe to assume that? Um, well, I'm noting the. The couple, these couple of um, waivers on the coverage of the, which is a odd term, the sewer system, the um, coverage over the um, uh, drain pipe and the culvert size. Um, I assume that engineering had it, uh, looked at those specifically and agreed with those because some of those. I mean, depending on, I, I can't necessarily tell where, I don't see where those specific waivers apply on this, but, um, you know, two feet of cover, depending on where the drain pipe is, may cause some problems if it's under the road. Yeah, I did, I, yeah, actually, it, it's one, one of them is under the road, and it's basically a question of, um, it's a high water table in that area. So we had to keep everything. We're basically raising the road about six feet at the cul-de-sac. <coughs> but to maintain these uh, BMPs, I had to keep the drainage up high mm -hmm. and above the water table. Um, so, so this this uh, culvert that goes underneath has probably like two feet of cover, and I think this this culvert coming out of the drain manhole has about the same. And I met with the town engineer on that, and it was his. Uh, his comment at the time that as long as I could show him uh, this, the strength of the pipe was adequate and that it was low enough so if they have to come back in and, uh, and uh, reconstruct the road that they wouldn't be hitting it, that he wouldn't have a problem. Uh, though likely, especially with all that water, it's going to end up causing frost heaves with only being two feet deep. Well, it's not right. going to be. There's not going to be standing water. Well, no, place. just because there's a, a lot of water, right? The 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 area water table yeah. has a high water table with the, so there's likely standing water in and around that area in the winter. Or, so, well, no, I mean, I mean, I've just seen conditions where you know culverts under roads are put only two feet deep, and and you end up with the um, with Hump. humps. Yeah. Yeah, but we're, I mean, we're raising this, so in this area, we're raising this road about three feet. So we're probably, um, the water table in this area is, a, is about three feet down. So we're probably about six feet above the water table with this culvert. So I can't imagine that you're ever going to have a frost heave there. <laughs> plus, plus, I mean, when you build a road, you know, you have, you have 12 inches of gravel, frost-free material. I mean, that's... They all say. You, you, you should 
can get a any trust. Okay. Yeah. But he reviewed the the HTTP and. Decision, I don't see the waiver for granite. I see it as a condition, but I don't see it under the waivers list. Am I just not reading it right? Condition, condition seven under prior to plan endorsement, it's page five. Seven is curving, and so that would be revised to describe what it is we're describing. And then, um, if you do want to include it in the waivers, you would have to say where it's waived from, I guess. It's only way from a small portion of the roadway. <coughs> so this, one of the waivers in here was the water main loop or the loop water main. The waiver for the loop water main? Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, it's something that I'm not, per not personally familiar with. Do you want to explain that one? Uh, the, the subdivision requirement is that all water main uh, will be looped, as far as I, I understand it. Um, where we're only extending it, I think the water main itself, only about 180 feet, and we're putting in a, um, a high bin at the end for, that can basically blow off the, um, blow off the main. Um, we felt that was, that was a, a reasonable uh, solution as opposed to a water loop, because you really couldn't loop this way Going out to Glenmere, I don't, yeah, I don't think you could go out that way. And even going this way through to um, Springvale, um, it would be pretty hard to get the main through here with the existing house and driveway and whatnot. So we thought that was a reasonable uh, way to ask for. Yeah, so usually on a the roadway they'll come in and loop it in and back out. It's continuous. Mm, okay. But here they have no place to go. Okay. okay. So yes, sir. Okay. Could I have your name, please? Frank Baldwin, uh, 26 Randall Road. Sorry. Thank it's you. Okay. Thank you. Meeting yeah. In <clears throat> in general, the waivers refer back to the definitive subdivision uh, regulations. So I mean, some of them are, or many of them are uh, aimed for the larger projects. If you're if you're if they're putting in a, a substantial road like I mean Reading Woods is an extreme example, uh, then there's there's a lot of things that we have to or want to uh, request slash control. This is a substantially smaller one, so and it's in uh, extending an existing street. So we're balancing the. Uh, continuity with the existing conditions against the actual the detailed regulations for a larger project. Well, I just put the list up on the screen. I don't know if it's readable, but yeah. do you have any specific concerns? Coleman, do you have any specific concerns? No, I, I just, uh, you know, I uh, thank Julie for the list. I mean, it's just I'm not sure any of us know what this means, like waiver of traffic study or uh, waiver of environmental impact report. We don't know, you know, what kind of report would 
Martinelli be issued and why was it waived? This is just kind of, it's a list, but it doesn't really mean anything to us. The town has subdivision regulations that govern what things are supposed to be provided when someone mm -hmm. designs a subdivision. So okay. certain widths of road, certain curbing, mm -hmm. certain reports. Um, many of these waivers relate to the fact that the applicant here is extending an existing road. So th they're just using what the existing road width is and the existing curbing condition and um, the existing sidewalk condition is and just extending it. Um, in, a, in a different subdivision, you might see a wider road, um, different types of curbing, things that actually um, meet the standards in the subdivision regulations. But in this case, they're seeking waivers from them so they can keep it consistent with what's there. If you think about a typical subdivision that sort of comes in perpendicular from a roadway, all of a sudden there's a new cut in a large cul-de-sac. Uh, depending on how large that was or where it was on the roadway, we might ask them to do a traffic study to make sure that there's enough sight lines for cars coming in and out. We don't create some ha some havoc. We make sure that the road is wide enough for fire apparatus to get in there and move around, and so that we can maintain the road when we eventually adopt it. So if I can kind of take all these things collectively, I think we're saying, well, since it's an extension of existing road or an existing neighborhood, it's not a new subdivision, none of these studies or reports are really necessary. Is that uh, summarize your... Uh, it's kind of like the way it is now, that's the way the new part's going to be. For the most part, you can look at that and realize that three houses are not going to add significant traffic to that roadway. Some of it relates to the size and the scale of the project as well. I mean, if they were extending it much further and adding 10 houses, maybe we would do a traffic study. So it's a judgment call. It's not if there's three houses, there's no study, but if there's four, there is. It's kind of like a, you folks collectively make a judgment. Is that yes. accurate? Based on yeah. past experience, yeah. Okay. yeah. No, we just wanted to understand the process. We were sure. hearing the term waiver over there. What's being waived? Sure. <laughs> Try to, be, try to be reasonable so that developments are consistent with what the town has and mm -hmm. its quality. Uh, conservation is still going through their full process, so while there's no environmental impact report, the conservation rules still apply. All of the drainage rules all apply. There's, there's no waivers from that, really. Right. 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 What a full process conservation is. And we appreciate their efforts. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for responding. Did we talk about snow say removal at all last time? I assume that all the snow will be pushed down to the end of the cul-de-sac. Does that present any challenges? Is that going to cause any issues? I don't. I mean, uh, can you put that back up with you? I mean, I think, I think there's plenty of uh, snow storage uh, available. Like you said, it's probably going to get pushed up uh, to the end. I mean, you know, off the edges. Um, you know, there is the, the, the tree lawn area. And, you know, t typically, um, you know, where they push snow. So I don't, you know, even, even up here, up, you know, near the detention pond, this area right here. So. So as it melts, where would the water kind of dissipate to? Uh, the the water that's off site. No, I'm like as the snow melts, how would that water kind of run off? Well, if it's, if it's pushed off the edge here, it's pre pretty much all this water uh, heads this way to, towards this ditch. But actually, in front of this ditch, there's kind of a berm, so it actually the water falls all the way down along the berm and then into this low area. So ultimately, that's where everything's going to go. This is a good reason to have the curbing there because they're actually collecting stuff with catch basins and so they push stuff up off the edge of the roadway, it'll melt and sort of permeate. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then the collection system will be clear. It won't yep. be reliable. You know, it won't be a big frozen mound along the edge of the roadway when we're trying to run the water over there. Yep. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh Shields three one way the road. Uh I'm a little bit confused by that. You're uh, taking the water from the cul-de-sac and sending it west. Very good piece. Uh, along the ditch, doesn't the ditch hook a right as it comes to 
to, to the east and comes back towards uh, what, what is that? Uh, is that the, the ditch Cleveland? The ditch uh, follows uh, this westerly path it, and I think it, uh, it hooks a right right about here, you know, and then it heads out towards I'm gonna say towards <coughs> here or the west of Glen here. No, I was saying uh, down here. Uh, there's another cul-de-sac here, end of the street. What's that name of it? Coolidge. Coolidge. Uh, and there's a ditch right there. I mean, that, yeah, it's that, it's pretty far down. And there is a ditch, I know, because I actually walked up there. But that's probably another, I don't know, maybe another 200 feet down. Okay, but then what is this? So do you have what's the Yeah, these are the wetland ribbons that are up there, the wetland bottom. Oh, 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 that's not necessarily holes in the ground. No, no, no. Can I show them what this thing so you can see how far? <coughs> I'm blocking this for everybody. Can see if it should be like this. Yeah, so that ditch is probably in here. Is that 100 feet away? Yeah, that's like, uh, these are 80 foot lots, right? So that's 160 feet. And then it falls all along that berm and into that low area right here. Yeah, that's right. Seems like it might be an easier to avoid. But I think there might be a little um, uh, miscommunication here. What he was describing before was um, melt from the snow that happened to be like up and over the edge of the curbing and up and over the the there's like a little bit of a berm there at the <coughs> edge of the, the cul-de-sac so that it would melt and make its way down around and it during the during the summer or when there's no snow that's not the route the stormwater would take it would go actually the other way down the down the, the street, so it's not system, yeah. they're not sending everything out around. Right. It's just that snow melt that happens to make it over that side of the little. Right. I don't want to call it a berm, but right, a, right the end high the area. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But a heavy rain would do the same thing. Uh, um, that's a good from the from the topo. It looks like it's um, maybe feet up so that's a from the level of the pavement to the yeah yeah so so in heavy rain I mean this is all pitched towards yeah. the catch basin so that's all going to get collected this way so it's only the snow melt that that'll probably get pushed over the edge that eventually will go into the um, towards the ditch No, it's the, the, it's the, old ditch. the existing, existing condition. Ditch. Okay. Yep. Uh, yes, sir. No. Here in front. Okay. My name is Miss Sankaran. I live at the end of the Randall Road, which is very close to the basin. I have talk to Jack before. Is that going to be the water problem going to be there for me? Because currently we have two sump pumps operating. And whenever the spring comes, after the snow melts, it's in the boiler room and we have to get it out. I hope that's not going to cause any problem right now. No, we're actually, and, and this is where um, this fellow lives right here, right next yeah. to lot one. And um, we're actually, I mean, right now, there's a portion of this water that comes from, from, from Springvale Road, and again, it travels over land. And, and, and right now, it actually travels down Randall Road to these two catch bases. We're actually gonna put a little berm here along his property line, so we can at least intercept our portion of it and then uh, push it out towards uh, Randall Road, and it'll be uh, 
uh, trapped in our system. And so he, if anything, he'll be getting less water now yeah. than, uh, than you're getting. Okay. That's true. None of their water should make their way, make its way to your property. And because they're capturing so much of that water in that whole area now, you should be seeing less water. You should see less water. Okay. <laughs> It comes every year, almost. <laughs> here's, here's what happens now. The plows stack as much as they can at the corner of Randall Road and Lisa Lake, which makes for a blind intersection. So the bulk of it gets pushed down into the current cul-de-sac. If they keep it in the cul-de-sac, the cul-de-sac isn't big enough for a car to make a turn, or a truck, for sure. So what they are doing now is they are pushing it over the edge into the woods. So now, what I see here is, over the edge is going to be somebody's lawn. So all of that salty snow is going to be pushed on somebody's lawn. And I mean, I don't care. I'm you know, not leaving the house I'm in. It won't be my lawn. But I think it's, whoever lives there might be a little surprised. Well, it's the it'll be put the with the extension of the road it won't be pushed sideways except on the tree lawn it'll be pushed down to the end well, the plow, okay the plows push it down to the current cul-de-sac so they're going to push it a little further to the new cul-de-sac <coughs> they push it over the edge over the curb yeah and the, the That's new what they do now so what i'm saying is over the curb now is woods you know in some of its wetlands uh but now, over the curve is going to be somebody's water. Well, the no. old cul-de-sac is significantly on. smaller than the new one. Right. So they'll, they'll be able to keep it along the edges of that and still maintain some movement, some turning radius. So the new one is considerably larger than the old one. Yeah. I don't know if I'd say considerably. I don't know about... I, I wouldn't say considerably. So but five feet in yeah. diameter. Uh, five feet in radius. The old one was 40 feet, and the new one is 45. But right now, there's no way there. the circle contains the snow. It just doesn't happen. They have to push it over the side, or it really is not a turnaround. They leave all the snow on the on the cul-de-sac. So it's just, I don't really have a point here. I'm just telling you how it is yeah. now. Sure. Yep. And, and I think it'll be very similar. I think they're going to push it off the end. Uh, onto this this wood well what, yeah what is a wooded area what will still be a wooded area and, and you know maintain this relatively uh, clear yeah I don't see it being an issue to what you're describing sir that it would go onto somebody's property I think that there's a section right there at the end of the cul-de-sac that yes. is not going to be somebody's personal property it's paper street right. It's Paper Street, so. Is it, it, is it legal to push it into a wetland? No. That's not no. in a wetland. But it's yeah. not, it's not a wetland. It's, the wetland's a little further now. Oh, okay. The wetland boundary's a little further away. Yeah, the wetland boundary's yeah. out here. Okay. Will. Any other questions? Uh, 
I, I don't know how much salt wa water you're going to get. Like, again, it's going to be pushed up probably onto the tree lawn and then all the way up to the circle and then out, out and over the edge. Well, these are pretty plows. You know, oh, yeah. It goes over. I think what conservation that? will look at that. I think if they were concerned about mm -hmm. it, they would certainly comment on it. Well, that's also not directly into a wetland. It's an area where the water filters through and gets treated before it goes into the wetland. So I'm assuming things like salt and silt would separate out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that, that's Isn't the that the point? Not salt. A little so dissolved. I don't know. I, I should probably should have. <laughs> that's fine. Do they? It's not my area of expertise. They, they do st use salt, right? Um, I do not know the <coughs> Yeah, yeah. Salt yeah. Salt yeah. Salt yeah. and sand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's not, it's the same situation. That right there is the same situation that's all over town, where you have some sort of um, um, drainage structure. That's even better because you have the tree lawn, then you have some sort of drainage retention area, and then from there you have a wetland. Um, so there's quite a bit of space there um, in comparison to many places in town. Um, most places in town, whether there's wetlands nearby, it's pretty right. far away. So, mm -hmm. <coughs> I don't think that I don't think that conservation would have an I issue. I don't think so either. Yes, sir. The same thing again from the beginning. I don't know. I think we talked to Mark about changing the fence currently we have a dilapidated fence and then once you put the fern at the end of the road <coughs> is that lawn going to be cleaned up because there are a lot of bushes <coughs> and all those things where is it where is this now at the end of your fence yeah at the end of the other it's coming to our house yeah in here yeah yeah that, that's all going to be cleaned up that's all, that's all going to be lawn okay there are a lot of thorns and other things on that oh, yeah. side. I've met them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. You guys all good? Yeah, we'll continue good. it yep. to the 23rd. Yep. Can I get a motion? Move that we continue the public hearing for the definitive subdivision plan at 0 Randall Road and 25 Springvale Road <coughs> until January 23rd yeah. at. Upon an extension of time from Okay. Okay. So we'll need an extension of time from you. Can I get a second? Then I'll explain it. Second. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue. We're going to keep this public hearing open and continue it till our next meeting, which happens to be the 23rd of January, because of the. Uh, the next one's the ninth. The next one's the ninth. But, but we won't have. We don't expect we to have. We don't expect to have right. conservation decisions. Right. I'm saying our, your yeah. next meeting is on the 23rd. Your next meeting is the ninth. Right. This hearing is going to continue. Yes. Right. Yes. This meeting will get continued to the 23rd so that we can receive the decision from conservation in case they want to make substantial changes and we can clean it up. <coughs> so we had a second. We had a second. All in favor? Okay. So we need a uh, notice. We need a request for an extension okay. from them. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Scheduled in that period, anyways, because of town meeting. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
You can hear him. He's just he's not <laughs> much louder. He projects well. He's projecting. He's speaking with an open throat. He's got good, good posture. Oh, I lost my agenda. Are we still thinking? Ten nights for ten. Eight. Eight nights? Yeah. But I'm happy to go to that. You have an agenda? I lost my agenda. Yep. Sign for Okay, so we have a sign permit for one general way. Is that true? Okay. Where is that? <coughs> okay. Joey, do you want to say anything about this one, or do you just want to have Mr. Latham speak on it? This is a request uh, by the owner of the property uh, to a uh, uh, one general way uh, to place four signs that really serve the function of directional signs. Um, they rather mimic the signs the town has opted uh, for their directional signs, speaking of New Crossing Road as an example. <coughs> I understand, however, this will have a steel frame and aluminum uh, cross pieces with uh, a, a reflective sign uh, on it, but not aluminum. <coughs> and excuse me, I know you've all been down there. This is a fairly unique sign, unusual configuration, the straight coming in, the sight's a good distance off of Walker's Brook. Uh, in addition to that, the buildings, of course, were old industrial buildings to the low rise. There are no false parapets that raise them up, which lets someone put a sign high. So you can see them when you're driving through the parking lot. So that gives rise to the need for these signs of them to give direction uh, to people as we use things off. Uh, so th it is difficult. I mean, I, I know my way down there. I know what, what's there. But uh, it is hard to find, especially as they try and bring on new tenants. Uh, to be able to have people identify and locate those particular tenants. So that's the reason for the request, and that's the reason for the four signs that they strategically located, uh, not near the public way, uh, but uh, really on the site of people who are on the site to find their way around. So that's pretty much it. I mean, we're going to have to answer any questions if you have. Um, I had a couple. I'll say generally I'm in favor of this. Just a couple of things. Um, the B4 sign, which is the sign that would be over by the Rite Aid entrance, yeah. it's unclear to me that that's even your property. Because I, 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 I <laughs> needed something. There's nothing. Uh, we weren't given anything, I think, that showed exactly where this would be it's located. It's intended to be placed on the property as you come in. Uh, the, the back of the building is a straight ahead. Right, but there's the fence, and then there's the MBTA's right away, or whatever that's called, the railroad right away, right? And it, if you look at, if you, if you go stand there, it doesn't look like there's anything beyond that fence line that might belong to you. But I didn't look at the GIS to see where the property line was, yeah. so that just needs to be cleared up. Well, that certainly could be a condition that has to be on the property. Sure, to sure. Of, of of that deep mm -hmm. A, 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 and with that, not in a location that hinders, um, yeah. you know, yeah, uh, that track, that <laughs> corners a little yeah, yeah, sight lines yeah. and stuff. <coughs> right. Do you have There's. A oh, we don't have those. No. Oh, you're putting it there. Yeah. Okay. Pulling into the park. No, I thought it was on, on the other. On the other side. I thought it was on yeah. the other side. Yeah. That's a little. Okay. Just think. Are people going to turn into the right, the right aid driveway when you point them like that? Well. I hope not. <laughs> you know, those arrows can be put on, a, on an angle, too, and if, that's, if you think that would be more yeah. effective. Because they're pointing. They're pointing to take a left. They're pointing to take a left before right. you get and into the you entrance. That way, sure you go into it. Might want to reconsider yeah. those. Um, and then the other one that I kind of had an issue with, because I know you're only allowed three, <coughs> and. Um, the B1 sign to me seems to be in the wrong place if it's needed at all because you've got the giant freestanding sign and you've got a single lane entranceway and there's nowhere to go 
until you get to at least the first island at the end of that first parking row. And from there, Market Pass is directly in front of you, mm -hmm. and everything is to the right. So, like, putting a sign with everything listed and pointing to the right seems foolish to me because there's nowhere else to go but to the right, unless you're going to Market Basket. So, the extra sign might not be needed. If it was needed, I would consider if the rest of the board allows the fourth sign. I might consider it putting in the center of that island, which is... Talking right here. Not on, not on the forehead, <coughs> not on the back end, because I see that would block traffic, but right mm -hmm. in the middle, mm -hmm. potentially, that's the first time you have a choice to do anything. Yeah. I, mean, mm -hmm. I still think it's unnecessary, because all those signs, there's only one store in front of me. Which, by the way, <coughs> is that location? If you remember, they were rather unwilling to listen to our traffic uh, patterns before yeah. either. <laughs> that location would work for them. <clears throat> the, someday they hope they have tenants that will not be on that pylon sign. And that may then be more effective when you're in there to identify where that some of the smaller tenants. Sure, and that, that's why I'm in, in generally I'm in favor of this. I think, <coughs> it's, I think it's fine. Plus it's contained within the boundaries of the property, so it's not like... You know, you're standing on um, Main Street and you see 500 signs. Right. But that, that, uh, if they re that'd be agreeable to relocate that. And, uh, so those are my thoughts. I don't know what you guys have. <coughs> well, this, the, I have no particular difficulty with the signs. I'm curious, the, the location on the diagram for the B2 sign, I thought we had a, a an agreement about the speed table arrangement when we were fighting with Market Basket about the parking layout. And what's shown here on the diagram doesn't appear to agree with what we had previously uh, discussed. For the parking configuration? Yeah, and the, the paths <coughs> through it. I mean, like, there's... it. Market Basket didn't want any of the recommendations we recommended. I understand. So, is that I don't what we're talking about? You know, this island. I mean, there was supposed to be a uh, speed yeah, table Yeah, I don't think that here. this there is. There is. match, this drawing yeah, matches the configuration of the parking lot right now. Hmm. Can we Google Earth that? Yeah, because like that right there, I don't think what that exists anymore. Like I think it goes through. Hmm. I see what you're saying. He's yeah. asking the question, what, one example is what's in here? That's just a, a landscaped island. <coughs> um, and if this so shows exactly I think this is how we want it. Table here. I think that's how we Should want it. Make them change it. Yeah. Right here you're, you're absolutely right. I, I agree with this. Island. This is exactly yeah. what is. Well, now there's two points there. So One is when they came in to make some changes, we had some concerns about traffic. Yeah. We agreed to something, I Market know, Basket said no, right here, and they reneged on the agreement. So, be right there, so the fourth sign, so be right there. you know, <coughs> in favor. So they never agreed to it. They did, but and they then Market no. Basket oh, Market oh, Basket oh. then told them no, they didn't I want to change that. it that way because it's more important for cars right. to work a certain way. They weren't concerned with the safety the way we were, so they right. went and did it their own way. I don't think this matches even what's there. Is that what we're saying? Can we look at yeah, the... I don't know that's this is how it's arranged right now? That's how the parking lot's arranged, yeah. See, I thought that this was... It's a curb that comes around. Curb now, I thought you could go through here. This seems to be part of... That's why I don't think it totally matches. Yeah, that doesn't matter. It's not a speed right here. You drive right here. This is in... Oh, so what's that? This... Right? This right here. It's not, yeah. It is a speed table. I think what they're sort of showing is continuous so sidewalk is actually yeah. not yeah. sidewalk. Yeah. That's all. I think it's where they put the dot for the B2. I got you. This, it's this little thing. There's this little, no, you can't see it. Sorry. Right there, mm -hmm. it looks like sidewalk. That does not exist. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think so that is a mistake on that. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, everything's 
Right, except for Beside that, that one little thing, it looks like a sidewalk. It's not a sidewalk. It's, it's the edge of the right. speed table. Can we see the picture of um, the B2 sign in place? B2? Where it's going to be located? Yeah, where they... You know? I thought they gave, they were in our package though. Yeah, it was on the Google Drive. Okay, those are just kind of trying to get a sense of scale and uh, sight lines <laughs> beyond it. <laughs> yeah, we do. We have it on our um, online package. We saw it. I thought they were there. Sure. <coughs> yeah, I think it's in there. There you go. It's that one. There you go. That. I was just trying to understand how much of the sight line it was blocking and I think it's okay. Um, is fire okay with having that near that hydrant? I, I haven't asked them but I can. I mean the buildings are on the other side so if anything they would be working you know to the other side of the sign. So I guess my only condition there would be that if fire objects to that location we'll have to figure something else out. So if the original decision, or is it the PUD regulations that say they're allowed up to three signs? <coughs> so how are we allowed to waive that? I, I don't know of any direct prohibition that they've been more of a regulation policy, not, not a bylaw. So if you could only have three, which three would you have? You want all four. I know. I know <laughs> you do. We wanted a different traffic pattern. Um, if, you could, if you could only have three is what I asked. Because if we can't figure out how to approve all four, we, would, we could approve three now and, and approve the fourth one later administratively somehow. You know what I mean? So we try to make it as easy as possible. I think it would be the two entrances and probably the two. Well, there's, I think, two issues. What's that? The, in the findings, and I don't have my copy of the ZBL with me, it says that the lot faces two or more streets, highways, and or more than one inch for a right of way, one sign for each street highway, and one sign per entrance shall be allowed, up to a maximum of three. Given that they already have a sign in uh, Walker's Brook Drive, what they're proposing is an additional four signs for a total of five or six. You you think that the existing freestanding sign is one of the identification signs? Yes.
our hope is that you would <coughs> construe these under the circumstances to be directional sign to the site itself. It's a unique characteristic to it. Uh, say, we can't comment on the content of that sign. <laughs> 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 it's a sign, and you're allowed four of them. <coughs> well, they were allowed, I believe, a total of three, according to the wording. Hmm. One a lot of faces. Or more. You get one per each street, that's two. And then one per entrance, that would be four. They have two entrances. No? It's two streets, two I entrances. Think the way that it's written is screwy. <laughs> Personally, that's why I'm just leaving it up to you guys to decide. I'm reading it as four, but David brings up a good point. Does the existing sign count as one? Well, it says one per. Street highway one per entrance up to a maximum of three. Which doesn't make sense. Which doesn't make sense. Exactly. Sure it does. So you wouldn't It says if you've got three if you've got four entrances, you're only allowed three signs. Does that make sense to you? It doesn't make sense. Well, it might not be possible. <laughs> 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 write, write that <laughs> one. <laughs> no responsibility for it. <laughs> That's different than the signs allowed in business and industrial zoning districts related to directional and information signs. Okay. Speak up. Um, where direct, uh, directional signs, one might be... Um, can be placed at each entrance, period. I mean, there's more to it, but that's it, that's relevant. I'm just trying to find where this... Well, it says zoning bylaw section 11.1.5.6.4. So we should be able to find that. 11.1. That's the one that I if there's no separate discussion in the bylaw about that freestanding sign that needs <coughs> to count as one of the identification signs. If these were directories on the building here, like this here, we wouldn't care so much, right? Right. <coughs> right? Directory sign on the building. So, I don't know that these are any more offensive than that. You know, they're informational. Right. Um, you know, if they do start subdividing into smaller, uh, smaller businesses as Mr. Latham mentioned there'll be a lot more signers that's needed. They'll run out of panels on the freestanding sign. Not to mention it helps people navigate a sea of parking and you end up driving less aimlessly. <laughs> no, you give people too much credit. <laughs> Thinking about the environment. Well, I suspect that we should just go ahead and approve them, but that <laughs> I'd be okay with that because it's all contained within the site. But you remember that the next time you come here with something else. <laughs> We're here. We appreciate all your help. We just try to get to that. 
long as we're not violating something. Like this. Um, I don't s do you oh, three or five. I'm sorry. It's confusing and small. <laughs> yes. I would propose changing the word identification signs in here to directional signs. Okay. In the decision. Sorry. And then, I guess we can still do that until town meeting. Um, right. <laughs> Here's. Um, I put directory. Didn't I say identification slash directory? I don't care what you call it. Can I just. I just think that identification signs. Here, so <coughs> this is this is called, and according to the way this is laid out here, is an um, identification sign or a freestanding identification sign. There's another number in here for directional signs. There's not a total number that can be on the site, but it says shall not be more than four square feet and not more than four feet high if placed on the ground and shall not extend above the roof line. Those are, those are directional, not directory. Well, aren't these directional signs? I think these are directory. They're not like well, exit, no parking, like, yeah. right. parking. I, <laughs> <laughs> directory. I, because we're sort of in that fuzzy little space yeah. between the new bylaw and the old bylaw, we're in the ether. I think we can we can do reasonable stuff here and be okay. It, 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 I agree it's directory in the sense that it identifies who's there, but directional the, in the sense that it's I, there with arrows for the purpose of help, help The us whole purpose of them, the intent is yeah. to provide car, people driving cars, the right direction to go, right. as opposed to these are the 25 25 businesses in the in the shopping center, which is what typic is a directory that gets put on the building. Right. That's why I think these are directional signs. Um, I, I think where there's no number, there's if they're called directional signs, then it's fine to have four of them. Mm -hmm. We would just need to um, waive the requirement that they the that they can be more than four feet high, or right? Four, four square feet. It's in eleven point one point five point six four. Um, it's uh, it's four B, and the one that you quoted here was four A. On the in the findings. Oh, okay, I see. <coughs> Let's just call them that. It says no advertising is allowed. This is like a combination of directory and directional. Yeah, okay. It's like so a new category. Direction narrate. It's a hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> Direction <-ary. laughs> Call it something. Yeah. I don't care. Call it Informational. Whatever. Informational, I don't care. I think we want to allow it. We think that there's a way to allow it and um, Navigational, you want to call it that? <laughs> it doesn't matter because in the next iteration of the bylaw, it's different. So True. it doesn't really matter. Well, sort of. There's worse violations on site with all the Gold's Gym the sign uh, by window signs. Hmm? The sign by does not update this section. But. Right, but. <coughs> There's issues in there, though, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Year. Well, the given that, however, the reverse proposed reverse of B4, which is the thank you for shopping and blah blah blah, is I think not allowed. The exit sign, if you will.
to see it from inside the site. So if someone put that sign on their door, would you care? No. I'm dancing around our enforceable yes. regulation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Personally, I think I think it, they're all fine. I agree with um, Nick's recommendation that that B1 sign get moved from where you're showing it to that to that island. Uh, personally, I think that we should call them directional signs and wave the four feet, foot height. And um, you let's know, just do someone that. can argue whether okay. that's um, whether that's advertisement or just providing refinement on where the directions are. Oh, and you know what you can do with the B4 sign? You could do one of those 90 degree um, arrows, right? So it kind of implies you go forward. Yeah. Yeah. Or even at an angle if you had to. I think that, I think that yeah, the. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do that. Okay. So how do we. So we're going to change the word identification to. What did you say? Directional? Directional. So you have to cite a different yep. paragraph. It's actually the same paragraph. Okay. Different subsection. Same section. Different. Yep. <coughs> and the waiver part, does that come under a finding or is that a condition? Say that we waive the, the size requirement to be no larger than as shown in the submittal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and words such as the because of the unique nature of the of, and scale of the site, basically say that it's a specific finding. Okay. So your intent is for the color, at least really the red, to match. The color red on the other town signs? That's the objective, yes. <coughs> okay. Sure. I think that's fine. I just, do we need to have that in here? Is it not in here? Honestly, I think if you go around and look, I don't think all the reds are the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. I think the intent is there, but I don't think. Yeah, these are red in colors. I think this is fine. I think it's fine, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, move that the CPDC approve the certificate of, of appropriateness for the directional signage at One General Way, 128 Marking Place, as amended. Second. All in favor? Thank you very much. Sorry, do you have a pen? Mine's done. Thank you. Yeah, it, the proposed wording does a good job of clarifying the 
the, the phrase common plan or of development or sale. This is the revised text. Yeah. That's fine because the terminology now, the capitalized proper name, is common plan of, of development or sale. Right. It's all one thing. Right. Where right. before, even if you uh, if you don't look at that and you look at the regulated activities, it still comes out as odd until you realize that one phrase is a defined phrase with or in the in the defined term. So the reason they say sales is for instance Rainbow Road gets approved and then they build a road and the lots are released and sold before houses are constructed. So they sell it to different people. Uh, right. Yes. You know, that all makes sense, yeah. and I get it. It's just the problem of how do we get in the middle of a sale? What does it, when does it come? When does that? Well, it, um, we can't regulate. We can't get in that process. All we can regulate in here is any land disturbing activity. That's it. It's, some, it's up to someone else to determine if that land distur ter disturbing activity w is part of a common plan or development right. or sale. Right, and that would be like in the town engineer or something like that. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. What? Okay. Am I right in assuming that we understand that? The intent here, because I mean, it, the I'm not sure if it would be clearer to say common plan for development or sale, because the thing we were, were attempting to regulate is the common plan, which is the something which could affect the, an acre or more. What is no. in, in some other town's bylaw? And why are we hung, hung up on this all of a sudden? Well, because we originally got hung up on it because the way that it was worded. Mm -hmm. Regulated activity. So mm -hmm. we basically said what it can't do. It didn't say when you're actually regulated. What applies. So they've reworded it. Common plan of development. It's not common plan for development. Yeah, it's, it's actually a, a terminology. Plan of, right. Common plan yeah. of development. I'm fine with the with the change as long because you add sale into the term. To the term. Okay. Right. Yeah, they just capitalized the yeah. S to make it match the definition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes sense to me. 
Um, do we actually need to? Or? Yes, I've, I've been told that we need to. I'm not okay. exactly sure why. But I haven't seen how a how representative town meeting works with these kind of things. So. <laughs> Move that the CPDC endorse the proposed motion to amend the main motion for the 2016 subsequent town meeting, uh, sections 7923. And seven nine four one. Second. All in favor? For Sarah. Alright. Do my job. <laughs> uh -huh. And then you have the release of law for for old time. Is there anything in here on the Oh, I just gave you the Oh, I have it right here. Hold on. Formality basically. There are two documents. One stamp assignment and then the other one I need at least three of you to actually sign and I'll have it notarized tomorrow. So which is getting stamped and signed? So the one that you're the one that you're stamping is this one and I'll just keep this for the file and then this is the one that I need you guys to sign here. Three of you. Okay. Things starting to dry up. I'll have it reading. Wait, so we were okay with releasing this, right? Yeah. It's yeah. been released. Right, it's we just voted on We don't have the paperwork. Okay. Nice pack. And it, so they can't sell. Oh, it's my favorite kind. What is it? I'll send you a picture of the box. Tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> and then you need to micros. sign them. Um, three of you need to, at least three. Do we yeah. need to date this as well? Um, yep. On the seventh day? Yep. Hmm. Eastern Standard Time. I think everyone needs to sign it. Yeah. We're all going down together. <laughs> We're signing it too. <laughs> Okay. Signatures next page. All right. So that's, that's what you were just signing. Oh. Just in case you wanted to read what you're oh, signing. Oh, good. <laughs> I, have my I want to give you I that would, opportunity. I Thank you. <laughs> I trust. <laughs> like Nick said, we're all going down together. So. You can take everything I have. the CPDC approve the release of lot, lot four, lot 33, four Old Farm Road. Yes. Is there a second? Second. second. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> mm -hmm. So let's get these minutes done.
Go ahead and grab your thing. Um, <clears throat> on page one, um, Mr. Safina asked if any additional lighting was proposed for the pumps. Mr. Latham responded that the screens on the pumps would be illuminated and that no additional lighting is proposed. Is that, did, did that, um, my recollection was that it was the, um, the pump reader board. The price indicators. The price indicators would be illuminated. I don't know if they necessarily had screens. No, I think they're all putting those little screens that do the ads and the, yeah, the, the gas station oh, TV. Right, right. But I think it was that both of them would be illuminated. I don't know if, I, if, the, I'm, if that was your recollection um, or if it matters. I was just focusing on that there's no, the fact that there's no illumination proposed like under the canopy. I, no, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can clarify it if you want, but my assumption is that the prices, the prices are lit, the and the screen, the has prices lighting. are lit, and the screens, yeah. Are, yeah. 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 <coughs> but I can, I can have that if you yeah. want. The price, think. well, panels and screens. The it's one uh, of those things that that tends to come up. <laughs> I'll add that. Too. All right. Okay. I, I want to say I thought they stopped blinking. By the way. I thought I was looking at them the other night, and either I wasn't there long enough. Are you blinking? <laughs> I never blink. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's never, I mean, it, it hasn't been obtrusive. I mean, even the times that I've noticed the, the change from one to another. I mean, it's not a, it's not a rapid cycle. On any one, but because they were off sync, you'd have them changing, you know. There's six pumps with yeah. three prices. And three and two sides. Well, I think, are they in fact switching over to Sitco? Yeah. <laughs> because the Sitco, the standard Sitco dispenser, doesn't have that. The, the multiple prices. Right. So I would, you know, based on what they presented, I think it, this reports it correctly. It reports it correctly. I just thought that we had additional. Why don't I look at the, because they did provide an indicator to go pump. I'll look at it and see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But right. I don't think they were going to light the, the sort of valence that's right. over no. the pump and they no, had they no, no additional lighting changes right. to the canopy or anything. Yeah. So either way. Mm -hmm. I think it's fine. Move that the CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of October 17th, 2016. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Yeah. Updates? Did you, want, um, did you want to just quickly look at this? So, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, they're not meeting again until January 9th, and like, all these people are coming in to sign up for the agency in the PUD and in Business Bay. <coughs> And so the agenda is getting full, but this one actually is the first one to give me materials. The other ones have just like come in and talked to me. Um, so I thought if you could just take a quick look at it and let me know if you think it's okay for an administrative approval. Um, I'll do it administratively. It's essentially changing the um, font. It's Kathy's it nails. Yeah, I think it's Kathy's nails and something happened with the ownership of the business and they're just renaming it. It's not like a new business. Um, yeah. And this, she said that the letters will be the same size as the Sims letters. The background color is basically the same blue except not faded. Hmm. Um, that's what she told me over email today. And the, um, let me get the other picture. The outline of the letters is just to show the But are they going to be this color or gold? Um, silver. silver. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she, uh, Julie sent that to me today, and I was like, you know, "This is the same Pizza Town battle. At least we got the same blue background as yeah. the one next to it." Basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, but you're not going to argue about font at this point, I think. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
this whole little thing of the whole position. Maybe they should spread the letters out a little. I was thinking the same thing. I think you actually it's said pretty that. Pretty crowded. For a piece of time, you actually haven't tried to spread them out. Yeah, spread that a little bit. Okay. It's just too, too tight. Yeah. It looks lost. I mean, um, the unfortunate situation for them is like, look at this. The tree? It's completely blocks the sign. Yeah, but you don't stand up at that height. You drive down, you're driving down the road. Can you see at the I know I always see the Sims jeweler sign. But that one's not blocked by the tree. Yeah, but you're only at, you'd only be at this spot for... Well, this one, well... Well, I the mean, tree will, won't have leaves for very much longer. <laughs> I know they have a problem. I talked to them about doing a blade sign or an A-frame sign, if they're allowed to, uh, but they aren't taking me up on that right now, so... That's weird. Yeah, I thought so, too. <laughs> Uh, it could help with the uh, I'm surprised they didn't situation. do an A-frame. A-frame's pretty cheap. I can understand they didn't want to do a blade sign. It's probably expensive to... Well, their answer for the blade sign was no one else on the building is doing one. Perfect. Blaze <laughs> exactly. the trail. I don't know. Last but time I had my nails done, I walked right past that thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I am trying to educate the public about yeah. what, what the possibilities are. Take up more of the background a little better. Mm. Big day tomorrow. End times. <sighs> End times. Well, the big day is going to be Wednesday. Very successful. Of the voting population. Does that include absentees? Yes. Yeah. Well, a lot of the kids are away. There's about 800 absentee ballots. Yeah. Wow. And 7,000 or 6,000 something uh, early voting. Hmm. Just where was the early voting? We're here. Oh. It's right next door. Not anymore. In here? No, it was next door. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll My wife came on tomorrow. Friday. She said it was packed. I don't know if I'm going to vote early tomorrow or late tomorrow. Don't wait. Why? Because then all of a sudden it's eight o'clock and you haven't voted. Well, I'm not going to wait till eight. I always like go late. Five or six. I had a problem. Like a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I didn't <laughs> like us too no, much. Any meeting updates? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, we can talk, but. No, it's fine. It's okay. Um, no, no oh. real updates. Okay. We're just preparing for a town meeting. Are we good for mm -hmm. we get you presentation? Do you have yep. any thoughts on that? You look good. So I did. It was in the Google Drive. Uh, oh, I, yeah, even, I, I sent it I, to you separately by email, too. You, to you guys. Um, but it was also in the Google Drive. Mm -hmm. Are you guys splitting the presentation? I don't know. We'll figure that out. When does it start? Yep. Well, m Monday, but probably not for three nights for you guys. <laughs> Maybe fourth night or fifth night? Fourth. <laughs> going to be a fourth night. I'm four. hoping, I think I'm hoping it's the fourth night. That'll be the 28th. So you don't want us to come until night four? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. Unless you're a town meeting member. Which I'm hoping it's the fourth night, not the fifth night. Because it's the annual Christmas party. On December 1st. You got to go with that. Mm -hmm. All right. Motion. To Move to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Sorry. All in favor? So I just want to say that we are on